at YouTube. Today's topic is he's done two drift week. Well, you're on your second drift week. Yeah, I'm week. on my second. How reliable is the Corvette? We're doing a Corvette review. Two drift weeks in. How many days of drifting? What's the worst part? What's the best part? Is it all hype? Is it good? I don't know. Tell me. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody should get a Corvette. I'll tell you why. So, I've done two drift weeks, and um, I, we put 7,000 miles on the first ones because I came from Colorado down to Tucson, over to Tampa. I tried to drive EYB. I left the car there for it. Oh, <laughs> that was not, it didn't, didn't work. go well. Didn't go well, um, but is what it is. So I just flew back and drove the car back up, mm -hmm. and then I let it sit all winter, didn't touch it, put it, did an oil change on it, drove it all the way out here. It's great. <laughs> Tons of laps. So you didn't even trailer this back and forth between drift weeks? No, and the only reason I almost trailered it here is because we had a goddamn snowstorm coming on the way in mm -hmm. that we actually drove through snow, me and Stukey in the S15. David was in his truck, so he was chilling with his seat massagers on, um, but no. We drove through, it did great, um, but that was the only reason I was going to trailer it was because okay. of snow. So I guess this is the shortest interview ever. Yeah, it doesn't Corvette's have to be. good. No, I'm just saying, Corvette's yeah. good, it's reliable. Yeah, uh, what, so has anything broken on it? Starter. How mo Oh, how hard was Second, it? Second, first day of drift week two, broke starter. First day of drift week three, broke starter. Why starters? Because you have long tubes or something? I don't know, it's all stock. Really? Yeah. It must be some type of heat soaking I think it's heat. Or something. I've heard heat. I do a lot of hot laps. Mm -hmm. Car gets a little warm. Um, but uh, no, it's... How I, long I, does it take to change one? 30 minutes if okay, you take... Okay, it's not a big deal then. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and I'm just going to grab a backup from, and have a backup on me from now on. But mm -hmm. uh, no, the car's been good. AC, cruise control, you know. Uh, I can fit... I fit all my gear in it. So, four rims, no tires. Mm -hmm. I got a tent in there. I got a chair, tools, helmets. Not a big car inside. No, it's caged too. I don't even know how you fit four cars. Tetris, I was good at it. Jeez. And here I am playing and Tetris. And it's caged. And it's caged. Yeah, it's uh, actually got it. Like, the cage fits really well in it. I'm going to sit in it. I'm kind of curious about yeah, the cage it's, now. It's not the most tall friendly, but yeah, you'll fit. I want to say thank you to all the sponsors, such as BC Racing Coilovers, for making Drift Week possible and making all my friends' Formula D careers possible and all the grassroots guys we know possible and all the media possible and making so much stuff in drifting possible. Without BC Racing, drifting would not be the same in the United States. Uh, so congratulations on sweeping Formula D the last few years and all the success you've had. Um, it's really cool to see that company grow as drifting grows in the United States. Thank you so much to y Plate imports for supporting Drift Week. Uh, go over there before all the cars get too expensive and buy your dream car. Thank you so much to ECU Master USA, who is also on the trip with us and supporting Drift Week, not just by monetary support of this, but also by being a driver, being a cool guy, and being around. Go to their website over ecumaster.com and do that. Might be ecumasterusa.com. Make sure you do that. And then thank you to Torco Oils and Fuels, so Torco is a new sponsor of Lone Star Drift and Drift Week 3. So make sure you go check out their products, go check out their Instagram. It would be very helpful if you just went to the Torco USA Instagram and went and um, told them thank you very much for supporting Drift Week 3. That's all the support you need to show. If that's what you want to do, it would be super thankful. And thank you to Drift HQ for bringing out the van. And if you do the same thing for them, just go tell them thank you on Instagram and a direct message. That is the best way to say thank you. And thank you to all of you guys for watching. <sighs> so tell me about the differences between an S14 and this and why you chose this. Because you had an S14 V8 car. Yeah, and I loved it. It's, it ran great. I, I kept, I'd never touched it and did much to it because I got it working well and then just kept doing seat time and seat time and um, I, the car started getting kind of beat up and I just didn't have the, you know, enthusiasm to like make a fresh S14 or reshell it or anything. And I wanted a vet and so I got a vet, I kept the S14 and then, cause I was like, uh, maybe the vet isn't that great of a car. So I'll keep the S14, build the vet. And then I built the vet and I was like, okay, fuck that S14. I'm gonna <laughs> just ride this all the time and cage it. So that's what I did. And uh, no, it's been great. I sold two Corvettes and I missed them. You should get another one. I know. Woot even told me, he's like- They're he, so expensive now. <laughs> Woot told me a few times this trip, he's like, hey, sell me that car. Like, Won't do it, I'll find you one, but 
Won't sell it. I, he's a BMW too. I know. Guy and he's, wants to change. I think he's been. I think I, we're. I'm slowly converting him to Freedom and Bald Eagles. I don't understand why anyone after you've driven this. And as long as like the tracks are decently sized, because otherwise an E36 would work at like Pat's Acres, yeah, yeah. tiny places. But I was gonna say, after driving one of these, it's kind of crazy anybody drives something else, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what other drift car is better out of the box. The only other, and it's like, but I don't like the feel of is the Mustang. Like as far as just like this is throwing. so much faster than a Mustang. I know, and like I don't like the steering geometry of the. It's just a little weird. This one yeah. feels like it feels like a gripped up S, S chassis. And so it's like, just a hole in the knuckle to make the angle kick yeah. work and stuff. Whereas with a core or a Mustang, you have to do a lot oh, of yeah, stuff. Oh yeah, all if the it's arms a and Mustang. stuff. The old um, ones, it's not too big of a deal. Yeah. So no, I, I'm I'm fully converted to Corvette. Like I'm. A firm believer. I'll tell everyone they should do it, um, except prices are going up because everybody's doing it. But it is what it is. So, do you drive any less aggressively? Because we have some cars coming in right now that are kind of—I don't want to cuss too much in this episode—but not great condition E36s. Um, those guys were jamming because they don't care about destroying the cars. Well, and at Villains, <laughs> they were animals with how they were driving. So. <laughs> I'm gonna say no because I put three tire marks on three different cars uh, at, at Villains. Yeah. Yeah. So you were just as aggressive. Yeah, as yeah. I, I love running doors in this thing. Um, okay. Yeah. So it, it it because it's got so much grip, it's the car you can put it where you want it pretty easily, mm -hmm. and like I can get up on someone's door real quick, and I can back out pretty quick too. Um, just the amount of grip that's in the car. <clears throat> Some people might not understand what you're saying. Like these cars have naturally so much more grip, I guess, because the transmissions in the back. The and stuff motor is behind the front axle, yeah. so that moves a ton of weight. And then, yeah, the trans axle axle is kind of heavy. This is like a race car compared to a 240. Yeah, SI. yeah. Like you, do, you spend all this money into like drop knuckles and this and yeah. that. And this is stock knuckles, stock. Yeah, it's arms, l the literally coilovers and a knuckle kit. So like good. a five hundred dollar knuckle kit. That's okay. it. Well, I think that we've kind of covered that, and we're not going to finish this interview too fast. So why don't you tell me what like your best experiences and worst experiences were on Drift Week so far? Because Drift Week is a lot of everything. I just realized how I'm going to conduct this interview is laying in this beautiful grass. It's like evergreen. This. We welcome to evergreen. It's green here. So yeah. Um, no, I <laughs> as <clears throat> Aaron relaxes in this beautiful weather. Which is supposed to be rain. Isn't it rain in the Pacific Northwest? We haven't, haven't had any rain. It's been gorgeous. It's awesome. <laughs> the weather's insane. Though. Yeah, um, but no, like ever since the first drift week, I was sold an idea of, you know, coming, turning this into a vacation. V vacation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, I love uh, checking out new areas, um, going to new tracks, meeting new people. Um, I'd never even been the Pacific Northwest. I was pit I was like kind of pissed when you did the next one because you're like, hey, I know we just did Drift Week 2, but you guys want to do Drift Week 3 it's in a few months? It's been six months. It's less than that. No, it's like six months, man. I guess. I guess. Can you flies. believe that? That's crazy. It was felt like, like three months ago. Yeah. So like that's why I was like, man. It's April, isn't it? So that's four months. And, and then November was another in December. That's six yeah. months. Okay, I guess you're right. I'm not good. And you know, it just feels like nah. because it's so. Yeah, no, and it's crazy, but so that's why fun. I did nothing to the car. I didn't even have time to do anything to the. Whoa, I wanted to blow on that thing and then didn't go. <sighs> I'm just having a good time. You do. Um, sorry, keep talking about your drift week experience while I play. No, the no, I, th it's it's hard to even say a ne like. For me personally, I need to find some wood to knock on, but I don't. I haven't broken anything. I see the struggles of people like slaving overnight, and like to me, I'm like. That doesn't look enjoyable. No. But um, for me, I've been pretty lucky of getting all eight hours of sleep every night. And so this really is a vacation. Yeah. No. I, that's. I, I pretty much turn it into that. I'm not. I don't have to work. Answer any work calls. I don't have to do anything. I'm mm -hmm. just. You know, along for the ride. Let's go hit some tracks. So. It's kind of like a cruise too, because your food is available when you get here. Yeah. There's catering everywhere. There's the track is like ready for you. There's no work for you to do because the car is really the work that you're supposed to be doing, and the car's not making you work on it. Yeah. So like, yeah, no, I don't know. It's easy. It life's, seems life's too easy good. for you. Drift week was supposed to be really, really hard. I know you kept telling. And if you look at all the other cars out there, like those, even the 350 Z's are up in the air on jack I know. stands. No, I even tagged the wall and I just had to change my toe a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Got a little, it was, that track was a rowdy first track. Yeah. <laughs> it was good though. Everybody kept saying villains was going to total out a bunch of cars and it yeah, didn't. Yeah, no, it I mean, it, it fucked up some cars. Okay. So how do we improve Drift Week then? 
That's a good question. I think just, I think sticking with, I mean, it kind of, everything works in my opinion as, as far as what you're doing. Yeah, but we have to do, like drifting has to escalate itself and like YouTube has to be escalation of like things get crazier and this can't be done. Like this can't be already the perfect idea. No. It has to get better. It, yes, but as it is now, I don't think big changes are- I think we already got it that good? Not perfect, but I'm saying like, I already saw a group chat of like people back in Colorado, like, cause, oh, those guys are all doing drift week. We should do our own drift week. Yeah, they can't do it though. Everybody <laughs> did that on the first drift week too. And I was like, LOL, like you guys don't know how you don't understand. Like it's, it's a lot of putting shit together and a lot yeah. of like, you come out here for like a month and like scout it and yeah. do all this shit. So yeah, I mean, I know it's a, a task for you, but. It's a task you know, for the drivers. It's a task yeah. to like organize them. It's a task for everything. Yeah. So, and like without, this great group of drivers like i wouldn't want to come like, yeah. like hey i set up these tracks it's just free for all anybody come who like you know i want to drive with good people like and that yeah. that's a, this is another avenue for everybody's that. been really good so this is less exclusive than the last one yeah. as well but it's turning out super well like some of the no-name drivers that i didn't know are some of the better drivers they're yeah. doing amazing. Some of these guys I've never met are killing it. Like, yeah. sweet. They're throwing it first day. Throwing it. And you're kind of region locked, not to insult people in Colorado. No, we are. But there's probably how many, like, really good guys to tandem with at home? We've Five got a guys, good handful, guys. but yeah, I'd say at least, like, really good tandem people, I'd say, like, five to eight. And so, they're here with you right now. A they're on Drift Week. A couple of them like are, three yes. of them are. Yeah. Um, David, yourself, and Stuky. Yeah, and then, like, Levi came last time. He couldn't make it. He's yeah. the one that told me it was gonna rain the whole time. <laughs> <It's> dumbass. <Yeah. laughs> I was like, perfect. Now you told me that. Now it's not gonna rain the whole time. And look at. So how do we improve stuff? First of all, I'll say something. This drift week, a lot of like the the driving on the street was not an attraction for the last drift weeks. No. It was like something that you had to struggle through. Yes. Um, like long distances, gross terrain, which is like El Paso area. Yeah, just flat hours, and boring. Fourteen hours. This one, all the driving is beautiful. Yeah, it's great. It's like. The, it's part of the attraction is like cruising, street sharking around the mountains with, you know, yeah. crazy cool cars and stuff. Um, we haven't even really gotten the mountain driving yet, too. It's coming up. We did. We drove Stevens Pass yesterday, which was really cool mm. on the way here. It was a little bit longer, but it was um, it was nice. Uh -huh. No, I, I, so, I love that's why I moved, I moved to the mountains. I moved from Louisiana yeah. from Texas drifting up to the mountains because I prefer it up there. So so. Are you done after two or are you going to do a third one? Um, if you space it out more than five months or yeah. five and a half months, whatever it is. You uh, think once a year is good for you? In, in my opinion, yes. And then for me too, it, it would like, I haven't been to the Northeast. Yeah. Um, so if you did one in the Northeast, I'd probably go just cause I haven't really. So if I scheduled one in six months for the Northeast, you'd go? Ah, oh, man. You're like, dang, dang fear my, of missing out. I have my to. wallet. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's the thing is like, uh, it really, I was talking to Dan Brockett about this and Dan's like, Aaron, don't schedule one so close. Like I have to work and he had a movie shoot and stuff. So he's not on this one. I'm like, Dan, you're not supposed to do all of these things. Yeah. Like, first of all, we want different people to do them. We don't want it to be the same cast of 14 people because it, I want it to be more inclusive than just YouTubers and professional drivers. Yeah. And we do need those people cause it builds everything up and stuff. But you know, like I want, like if it was just drift week one crew, you wouldn't have got to join. Yeah, no, I, I like, suck at YouTube. Don't, yeah. yeah and I'm you sorry. shouldn't be YouTubing, you have a real job and you <laughs> have other stuff going on. You're like, yeah. I don't want everybody to YouTube, yeah. that's crazy. No, I'm not good at it. <laughs> um, but my point is, is like, if I host another one, I don't think that you're necessarily like, you should do it. Except yeah. if it's a bucket list thing, you should yeah. go to the Northeast. Yep. And I'll pressure you into going that way by hosting it and then you're like, Dang it, I have or to. Or if do you that. did a Rocky Mountain one, I'm all over that. I can definitely help plan it if you. Uh, I would love to do that. Uh, like, it would be cool if we did like Idaho, Utah, Colorado. There's some, I mean, hit Wicknick's area, hit yeah. Rudy's then area. Then that almost has to be in the summertime, though. It would have to be. So it would be in two months, and I can't do it. Oh, I know, I know. I'm <laughs> saying like a year yeah. and two months. <laughs> yeah. I have a baby coming up, so it's Oh, yeah, harder. you do. Your life's so, about to get even more hectic. I know. So, <laughs> oh no, my mic flipped. I'm so bad at this. I'm going to put my mic this way. I have to quit doing that. So, sorry people. So, uh, what? It just pointed at my face. There. So, um, how many drift weeks do you think you have in you? Like, I'm asking because you're the customer yeah. and I'm the person selling you drift no, weeks. No, you are correct. And 
it is kind of like you're doing more drifting than you normally would in a year at mm -hmm. all locations. Like you're normally say if you're a Louisiana driver, you do the same skid pad event at NOLA. That's why I six times in a year and then you're burnt out. And now you're probably doing IMI or whatever up in Denver area until you're burnt out. Yeah. And you're I, burning yourself out on tracks. Yeah, I um I, I try to hit like grid life. We have a grid life that comes up to Colorado. Um Dan Brockett's no coast mm -hmm. um, events are pretty fun and it's not too far. And then I'm actually missing LS Fest mm -hmm. uh, for this event, which is the first time I've missed LS Fest West. Mm -hmm. um, so I like going down there. Uh, but, but yeah, even no. Then it's really repetitive. It you're is. Doing the you're same right. Things over and over. It is. It is the same. And you haven't thing. done any of these tracks, have you? None. I've never so. even been to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it's all new to me. That's cool. Yeah. So that's why when you said we're it's going like to the Pacific, it's like a destination and adventure vacation. And that's that's what I'm telling. That's why I'm saying like I suck at YouTube because I want to just enjoy driving. I don't want to spend all my time editing and oh, worrying about ca Especially cameras and stuff. Especially because if you don't do it hard enough, there's no payback. You're exactly. Just doing it for the heck. Yeah, I'm just making memories to put online. But yep. at the same time, like I got whatever. Let other people make the memories yeah, for me yeah, and I'll watch them. Great photographers here and tons of vid videographers. So mm -hmm. yeah, let them do that. If you ever like hired a photographer for a project or anything, it's cheaper to come do drift week than, hire, yeah. than have everyone point cameras and just like tip them a little bit of money. Yeah, seriously. But um, okay. Anything else to chat about? Um, you still haven't said how many drift weeks you do before you burn. I would, cause you're not burnt out yet. A couple more. I would say a couple. Like yeah. I said, if you do one in the Northeast, I'm in. If you do one, a Rocky mountain one, I'm in. But if you, like, did another one around Texas, like, I don't know, like, because I've driven. You've already done them. Yeah, yeah, and I, I live down there. So I did, I did, when I was down there, and that's what I did love about Louisiana, because Texas, Florida, Georgia, like, there's just every state next to us had something cool going on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, in Colorado, it's like, I, it's an island. It's a cool, it's cool. Like, it's great up there. I love it. Um, I moved up there because I was spending... One of the reasons I moved to Colorado is because I was spending too much time drifting in Louisiana. I was doing like 15 events a year, like more than one a month. And I was just like, man, like it's killing me. I can't save money. I don't know what to do. And I always want to move to Colorado. So I moved up there and now we have off season. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So I don't have to spend my money all winter on drift events. I can actually now like- Now you spend on snowmobiles. Yes. And I started a snowmobile company, but that makes money. So, yeah. and I'm actually on the, while we're on the subject, um, it's actually one of my uh, projects I'm working on. I'm trying to figure out how to rent drift cars along with snowmobiles. Oh man, it's way too destructive. It, yes and no. So we have a local track. The local track charges $100. You Which just one show is that? IMI. Okay. Um, there's really not walls there. <clears throat> so I j I'm in the process, sneak, sneak peek on my business that I'm working on is running a drift rental and maybe a little bit of teaching too. There's not, cool. not I think really. It would be really hard to do though. I've done the math before, and you have to charge like two thousand bucks a day or something for a full thing, like with tires and everything. Like it's just yes and no. Like I, I don't know. I've, I've ran some number, uh, some numbers that. I real... guess if the cars live there, it's not too bad. Yeah. But typically, like just transporting the cars is going to consume a couple hundred bucks at minimum. Yeah. Your time to do it, your time to maintenance the cars. They're just so much. Yeah. Well, I'm, I hate the idea of renting drift cars. Yeah. Well, I've already started a rental business, so you You're know, used to I'm it. trying to like figure out where what works and what doesn't. We want to. Yeah. I'm thinking about renting Jeeps and side by sides and all this other stuff. So we're okay. just in the works of it. So I'm like, that sounds fun. Yeah. No. Well, I, I moved Not to Colorado. Some of our YouTubers come out and do it and like promote it. I already told Brittany and Kevin. I was like, hey, um, they were so busy with um, their Ultra Four stuff this past winter. I was like, hey, y'all yeah. want to come snowmobiling? I'll put you on some really fast snowmobiles. <laughs> Um, okay. Anything else to chat about? No, no. Keep right. uh, keep keep Drift Week alive. Keep doing it. I love this stuff. Um, Thanks. I think I think it's worked out well so far. And I'm trying to keep evolving, drifting, and doing different experiences, and like keep it alive and keep it interesting. Because for guys like yourself and I, it's a burnout path. You're eventually going to stop, and we're kind of chemically addicted to it, and it doesn't make sense a lot of times because we have repetitive things that we're doing. Yep. This is super unique for us and it's a new track all the time in a new area and I can make it very different. We could do it in different countries. Um, it makes it fresh. And typically there's no incentive for you to come up to the Pacific Northwest because it's too expensive, too far and everything else to do two days of drifting. Yeah. You have to fit in like a ton of drifting to make it worthwhile. And this makes it turnkey. Yep. Typically it's too hard as well. Yep. You know, to, so this just like, it's like a cruise. Yeah. 
but and it's certain it's it's just it's a bunch of things way. condensed into one thing you get yeah. to travel you get to drift you get to meet new people see new yep. places i need it that's kind of what i'm i'm in it for yeah. at this point oh i have something else to say yeah oh you didn't go on drift week one no that doesn't work no. but i was gonna say um, I'm trying to force the networking of everyone by having parties constantly. Yeah. So even if everybody doesn't come to the party, there's still a party available and a bunch of people like sitting around a bonfire the other no, night. No, that was rad. We've already had three nights of them, I think. Uh -huh. And we have another one tomorrow night. Um, so I'm just trying to force people to no, I, network I, and be friends I, because people talk the, about the camaraderie not being there on Drift Week 2. Yep. So I'm trying to force it. No, and I, I like... Um like how we had waypoints and stuff. My mm -hmm. only suggestion to that is like actually a map of where to go because we got kind of turned around getting yeah, <laughs> over I, to Walla Walla. I was going to do it and I just was like, oh, I made all the waypoints and it made sense to me and uh -huh. I even pre-drove it. Yeah. I was like, no one's going to screw this up. We screwed it up. And then people screwed oh, it up. Oh yeah. Dude, no, I think, but like. But doing, I've never done a rally before. So. Yeah, it's all it's all new stuff. But no, I, I just trying to do that with that huge group of people is hilarious. Just yeah. seeing all those cars. It's me learning. Yeah, no. And I think I, that's the direction you should head is yeah. trying these little things like, yeah, let's try rally stuff. Let's try more party stuff. Let's try. Just getting people together, and I think that um, that's been working out very well. Cool. All right. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us. Um, the Corvette thing is too easy. It yep. just works. Get a it's Corvette. super simple. Yep. It's super reliable. I just like asking people about their cars because if you ask somebody about a 350Z, they're like, "Oh, it's great, never breaks, but it's slow." Yeah. Or if you ask an FRS guy, they're like, "I want, I want to kill myself." Or the IS300 guys, they're like, you have to motor swap, transmission swap. They're saving up for an R154. They want to do an AR5 transmission to save $1,000, but then yeah. you got to do all this conversion nope. stuff. And like, it's crazy algebra to try and make a drift car that'll survive and make it your budget. And that IS300 over there is probably more expensive at this point than the Corvette. Yeah, I'm like 20 into it. Oh, well, he doesn't have that in that. But I mean, but it's got like a it's got like a twin disc. Yeah. Like re gear. And also like, it's lasted a long time already. Yeah. Which a bunch of the other cars are not going I've, to do. I've had the car about a, a year yeah. and a half and I've I've done I mean this is second drift week and I've already I put probably seven or eight events on it before drift week. Mm -hmm. So it's already seen like thirty something days of drifting Dang. and driving across the country. That's amazing. Yeah, and not, and no lack of uh dialing back on draft uh, on um like running doors and stuff because it it rips <laughs> um, hi everybody i want to say thank you to for watching the video and here is all the dates for drift week three out in the pacific northwest we're going to be out on multiple i think four public dates you can probably see them over here and we're going to be drifting doing ride-alongs entertaining you guys driving across the country having people walk behind me i'll see you there bye